We done underrated, overrated. I'm back again. Only be able to use a size triple zero brush for one year, or only be able to use a size 10 brush for one year. I'm gonna use the triple zero, and I'm just gonna dedicate myself to only painting epic scale models. <laughs> <laughs> These are the three paints that you could not live without. Vallejo 70950 Black. Scale 75 Metal and Alchemy. That's black metal. Athonian Camo Shade. What sizes of brushes do we like to use? I'll, I'll try and use, just through pure laziness, the same brush for, for as much as possible. Before we get started with today's episode, we wanted to let you know that we now have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studio shop. Whether you're wanting to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character you're painting, you need a new airbrush, painting accessories, or want to book a class, you'll find what you need. We also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. We are on the new set. New stew. Yeah. I did, I did try as much as possible to make it look like the Arcs Angelicum, hence the ridiculous amounts of Blood Angels artwork. So We said we were going to have artwork on the walls, and then James apparently took that as opportunity in free there's, reign to just make this the Blood Angels podcast. There's literally a, a Dark Angels artwork. I can see it from here. I know I said I wanted to be able to see it when I was sitting down. That's why it's I there. meant I wanted it up here. No. And um, that it. was the original plan. James took one look at it, and now I've ended up with these two behind. Denied. Good artwork, to be fair. Iconic artwork and worthy of the walls. If you're listening, I suppose just head to YouTube quick. Yeah. And uh, you'll get to see the new studio. Yeah. For the audio listeners, we're on a new set. We've got a few uh, a few new changes, actually, for the podcast. We mm -hmm. have all been listening to your comments, so thank you, everyone, for giving us your feedback. A few new things. We've got some new segments, new set, obviously. And we've heard you. We are making the episodes longer now. Yeah. So, there was yeah. only so much we could. I kept, I kept replying to people and being like, you know, we will when we can, and da, 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 but yeah, it seemed that's what people wanted. So give it a test. Yep. yep. And please, obviously, do let us know if you have any thoughts or suggestions for future episodes. And without further ado, our topic today. Bit of a show and tell this week. These are the three paints that you could not live without. Looks like you've got a few more than three there, George. I'm not going to lie. I've got five. Spoilers. I might have five. I basically, I wasn't sure this morning. I was like, I'm going to bring these. I'm still a bit undecided of which ones have, have really hit the top three. And then Joe was like, well, you could do those as one because they're technically all related. So it's my fault. It's my fault that you brought in too many. Well, and we had to stick them all in the episode. If James is going to come at me for it, then I'm definitely going to bust a load <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. Three paints we couldn't live without. So we're going to go around. We've got a bit of a show and tell, like I said. And uh, these aren't like obviously a, a diehard list, but these are... Paints that specifically for us have a have a frequent uh, appearance on our on frequent our usage. Yeah, Very I think in terms of maybe it's uh, more like like I said when when I proposed this to you guys last week, I was like, these are the ones that you probably couldn't substitute for something else. It's not like a oh I really like this color. It's like yeah. this paint specifically. Yeah, so you're not picking it just because you like the color. No, no, it's not that, that no. correct. Uh, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> on, I do actually no sorry I do actually want to say I've accidentally already. Seen James's, yeah, um, and well, you predicted, you but, thought, but you know I, me well enough. I wanted predicted. to, I wanted to predict them on air, yeah, but I've accidentally now already seen them, and I don't yeah. want to fake it. But my prediction was correct, yeah. I did want I, to put that I, out there, I, and I want the credit for it. <laughs> my prediction was correct. I felt like I didn't even really need to ask. We could have like, I felt like we could have picked these for each other almost. Yeah. In You're a way. diminishing my achievement there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on, James. What have you got for us? So. Uh, First I'm, one. I'm going to go with the first one. So I'm not going to go with the obvious one. That is in in the three. But <laughs> but I'm going to go with the first one, which is uh, which is Vallejo seven o nine five o black. It's probably in my mind the best black paint in the market. Like it literally. I'm going to put it on the stack of stack of white dwarfs. So yeah, you we'll can, build up over can, there. Yeah. So we're in it though. That's an oldie. I know. I didn't scratch it. It's fine. Uh, the, 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 the reason why look, all painters need a good black paint, um, there's loads on the market. I think for the one that this trumped, which is hard to get, uh, which is the original Chaos Black in the pots. Chaos Black used to be super matte in finish. Um, used to cover like tarmac as well. So this is the, this is the closest. Oh, cover like tarmac. It does. One, yeah. it, this is, this is literally 
This is literally the best black paint, in my opinion. And I want to say that, like, obviously, you're watching this and whether you take away from this one paint that you're going to try out or whether you take out, you know, all the paints from this uh, and, and try using them, that's totally on you. But I think a staple paint in the painter's repertoire of, of selection should be a good black. And Vallejo 70.950 is, or as we call it, 950 black, is probably the best, in our opinion. Um our opinion, he's throwing yeah. us all in. Yeah, you, you, love bit, you love a bit of nine five zero, don't like. I don't I mind mean, a bit of nine five zero. I am inclined to agree. Yeah, so he's right on that one. Yeah, but. There, there, there are other matte blacks and things on the market, but I think, um, I think just generally the performance of this one, the white dilutes on the palette, the white covers, um, and and the, the quality of the matte finish that it does give as well, I think is very, very, very good. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've big fan of it and I'll always try and recommend it to people when they ask me for a good black unless you've got pots and pots of cast black kicking around this is the is it just the coverage thing for you specifically Co it's just the coverage and the the strength of the pigment as well like the amount obviously model color being a very uh, dense sort of uh, range of, of Vallejo having lots and lots of pigmentation in them you don't often find many in my opinion from try and load you don't often find many model colors that that don't have loads of pigment in them and for a black to be as strong as this, especially when you're doing like uh, glazing or even sort of blending, et cetera, using black, this is the one to go to because it gives you the, the sheer volume of pigment in the paint gives you such a scope of um, such a scope of ability to, to 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 dilute the paint down. It can go all the way from a really really subtle subtle tint glaze all the way through to just a really solid base coat. It, and you've got between those two points, you've got a massive scope of, of dilution that you can use those incremental dilutions as different tools for. Um, so yeah, so I think I think personally, yeah, nine five zero is 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 the one. My, uh, my gripe with nine five zero, right? Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> I think I like nine five zero. I use nine five zero a lot. It's very matte though. Like it's very matte. I think that's what I like about it. It's called it's called varnish. You can just varnish. I think it. I think for me, like probably no, no, don't varnish. It. No, I'm saying enjoy if you want, the if you, if you wanted like a satin, more satin or glossy finish, you can just do that afterwards. Yeah, but just enjoy the. Matte that's what I was going to say though, because like if I'm if I'm doing it as like a, as an accent part of the model or like mixing it in whatever, that's fine. Yeah, but when I'm doing like a black model, it's like I've now got a whole like varnishing process. I feel like. I've well, yeah, but that that's that goes down to. I mean, when I say it's like for blocking in black areas and stuff like that, obviously if you're gonna if you're gonna base coat a model and you don't want it matte, then go. For for like chaos black spray can with a hair dryer, I have a nice satin sheen once it's dried. Or there's other blacks on the market that give you a satin finish. Obviously, Abaddon. Uh, a lot of people say that Abaddon doesn't cover as well or whatever. But um, if you want a satin, if you want to represent leather on a model with black, Abaddon black Why is amazing. Why is Abaddon such a controversial black? I don't know if it's controversial. I, 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 I hear either people like, oh yeah, it's it's absolutely fine, or I hear people like saying I think, it's awful. I think it's. It, it is the, the finish of it, I think. I think a lot of people are probably wanting it to be a bit more matte or expecting it to be a bit more matte than it is. Mm. But I don't know. I never. I haven't used, is it Corvus Black? The other black. Corvus Black's it, a yeah. bit like a it's is a that gray. Matte, it's a bit gray. It's, it's not as black. Oh, it's not like as, pure black. No, no it's, it's like not, a little no, bit lighter. No. So it's like a first. Yeah. You, you, so it's a highlight. It's a highlight stage. I wouldn't oh. say you could use it even as a chunky, to be, to be honest, on Chaos Black. I think it's a little bit still too dark to use as that. So it's still, I'm, it's still like a, I'm actually pretty sure that they use that for the towel on the suit on the box art. Potentially, okay. yeah. I, I know. I'm, I think Scam Black Dinges. See, sometimes anyway, I but, prefer that if I'm going to actually be base coating something black. Almost. The reason I actually like 950 and why it's so matte is because if I was base coating something black and it was like satin or glossy, yeah. I find it's so hard to actually pick out the details and stuff when I'm painting, even with my magnifiers, <laughs> um, before you say anything. Um, so the the way, like how matte that is mixed with also priming now with the Colorforge matte black a lot of the time. That's they work really quite well, well together. Oh, well. they are like mesh so yeah, well. they work, yeah they so work that really well. for me yeah. makes it a lot easier to paint if i'm base coating anything black i'll go straight with with 950 yeah no, but i, I also there's a lot of brands where i haven't actually tried it it's mostly trying gw stuff first and it not being matte enough and then stumbling upon that so joe what you got what's your first my turn yeah first i've got them stashed behind the white i box. even even i didn't know you guys had them stashed yeah uh so i'm gonna go with i've dropper bottled these uh but I did them before George gave me the hookup for the good bottle. So I'm taking credit. Quite bad. I'm taking credit. I'm going to go for, I also drop a bottle, uh, a shade paint, which I probably wouldn't actually bother um, now. But oh, correct, yeah. correct choice. Um, but that shade paint is Athonian Camo Shade, which seems like probably like a bit of an unassuming 
choice that wouldn't really stick out as, as someone. Oh, is it on the table? I can see it. Oh. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Um, so basically, I, I think this is the one of the only shade paints that I've not managed to replicate the effect better with either thinning down a normal paint yeah. or some of the new contrast paints. For whatever reason it is, someone who paints a lot of green, or it's like orcs or dark angels or whatever, um, and likes a bit of the grittier look More dark in, look. in some of those recesses. Yeah. Um, it just like, I'm not slapping it over the whole panels or anything like that, um, but it's quite, it feels quite versatile because you can use it on like green skin, like I'm saying in the yeah, recesses, yeah. or you could use it on armor, or you can put it over um, like basin that isn't necessarily green to give it a bit of a green, dirty hue kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you put it over metals before. It works really nice over metals. I've never it? really done it with metals, but yeah, yeah, I imagine it'll kind of give it a nice little grimy looking, uh, maybe for like Nurgle stuff, it could be quite it's really, good. It's really good. But it's just always one of the, it's the only shade paint now that I'm still using and haven't really replaced with either a base paint or a contrast or something like that. Um, so I would just wanted to encourage people to not forget about it as they move on from shade paints. And, and is that one of the old that. ones as well? It is one of the old ones. Yeah. Have it's, you tried the new? Uh, I haven't tried the new formula. I had a few of the old ones kind of backed up. I don't mind so. the new formula. Yeah. The new formula is good. Yeah. Is it more satin? More con- then in terms of finish, it, it behaves more like a contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Like for sure. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, whether it's old or new one, they both they both still finish. Very similar in the way mm. that they do finish them. The, the I think the only new formula shade that I've actually used is the Nuln Oil, um, which is actually quite good, I think, for... It's better now for metallics than it used to be. It's not as say. potent. Yeah, I would say it just... It just looks... I don't know if you use it correctly and don't slap it on too much of it, it, it looks a little bit nicer. But uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried the new, uh, new formula camo shade. Well, yet. speaking of Nuln Oil over metallics... Yeah. Don't worry. I've got your two in one over here because <laughs> uh, my pick is scale color or scale 75 metal and alchemy. That's black metal. What a Put color. that on the white dwarf stack for you. What a color. First of all, right. I'm going to go on a bit of a, a bit of a preach here about scale 75 because they're, they're kind of new to me. I've, I've been turned onto these by the team. So first of all, with all their metallics, right? The pigment is like, or, or not just the pigment, but like the microflex in all of their metallics is so finely ground. It's literally like paint with like liquid metal. It's mad. Like even I would imagine under your magnifiers, Joe, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to see all those little flecks of uh, of mica flake in there. So love them for that, which also means that they thin down nice, and you can use them for glazing and highlight and whatever. But pin in that, that color is basically a lead belcher with no oil wash replacement in one coat. I'm saying that hot take, black metal over black. If you're careful with it, one coat you can do it. Yeah, it is very, very good. I think the scale metallics are the closest to the, in my opinion, to the old GW metallics, like the, the like bolt gun metal um, and chain mail and stuff like that. Just not in, in hues and stuff, because back in the day, there, there weren't as many sort of spectrums of color. But for the... There weren't as many. <laughs> I love that as the idea of like, back back when the world was black yeah. and white. Yeah. No, no, what I mean is they when just... When TVs didn't... changed, that's when, <laughs> that's when yeah. the world changed as well. That yeah. wasn't technology on the TV, that was just how the world... All it is, is you didn't get as many choices of, of metallic hue uh, back then. But you, but um, they are very similar in the in the in how refined the, the flex are in them. Um, uh, and they're the closest I've found from like current existing paints to them and i think that they they like you're quite right they paint perform like so well like i'm a huge fan of um dwarven elven uh gold they're just they're just mega shadowing yeah (laughs) shadowing yeah yeah so they're they're absolutely mega but yeah black metal is amazing um it's really good actually because sometimes you'll put like black actually it's incidental that we've got 950 here because i'll put 950 into uh, like Lead Belcher or if this is before like Iron Warriors was around or any of those colours um, I put 950 into my silver to make a darker version of it uh, darker than Bolt Gun or darker than Lead Belcher for example so yeah but it is, it is absolutely mega as a colour okay well uh, ascending beyond that this is using, your trinity one this, this, is your this, trinity. Is, this is in my opinion the holy trinity right of metallics so you've got the black metal yeah I've got here heavy metal yeah. that's a brighter silver yeah and I've got Viking gold which, in my opinion, is the gold of choice. So, these three, as a trifecta, I feel like you can paint any silver 
or gold on any model using just those three and mixing of those yeah, three. between the three. Those yeah. paints mix so well together. And because the pigment is ground so fine and the microflex is ground so fine, they glaze like a dream. Yeah. I'm, so these are, all three of these are scale 75. Yeah, they're yeah, in the they same range. Metal yeah. and alchemy. Yeah, and alchemy set. Yeah, it's great. And that's the one thing for those, for those who are watching that, that maybe aren't familiar with uh, with scale paints. They come in really good sets of eight. So you, I think it's eight paints that come in a set, but oh, it's eight, eight or ten. I can't remember exactly. But you can buy them individually as well. Yeah, you can yeah. you can buy them individually. But the, you get them in a specific set that's tailored for doing specific tasks. So for example, like uh, metallics or brighter colors, etc., etc., etc. There'll be loads of flesh set. They've got metallic set. They've got a fantasy set. So they're really really good. Um, but I, I've, I've do you know what? I've not really used the Viking Gold too much. I've used Dwarven and Elven, um, and they're they're they're, they're really they, good. They behave pretty similarly. I've just found that specifically Viking Gold behaves really nicely with the silvers for yeah. mixing in your highlight stages. Yeah. And also, personally, I just prefer that like slightly bronzier gold hue. Yeah. Like just my personal taste. I don't yeah, like yeah, a really no. yellowy gold. No, but, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's my first one. Right. Technically three. Technically, <laughs> technically three. Yeah. So I'm going to say the best will last. Yeah. But well, everyone already knows what that's going to be. So yeah. I think you should do it, and then they don't know what the next one is. <sighs> Spoiling my fun here, Joe. Well, you're doing but, it the wrong way but, around. Just do but, the one that everyone but, already right, knows. Okay, I'm going to say it. So, so I'm a massive fan of the OG white hex lid pots, and um, and and really this bit is specific about one that's my favourite from that range. Um, but in general, all of them are, I absolutely love, and I still love to this day. So we're going to get out. It's actually empty because I've used all of it. Um, <laughs> But but <laughs> I've got plenty of other ones to, uh, at home. So uh, so we're going to go with Blood Red. Um, now, what year are we talking? We're talking 1991. Yeah, like, yeah, I think it'll be on it. It doesn't got a date on it. It's, yeah, no date on it. But um, for anyone that's unfamiliar... It's if older you're new, than me. That, like, that paint is significantly <laughs> older than me. If you're, new, if you're new to a hobby, then you probably won't recognize these old pots. But if, you, if, you, if you've been around since second edition, you will definitely... Uh, know this pot and it will hopefully bring back some nostalgia for you they literally are still to this day when you buy it when you get one and it's sealed or even if it's unsealed the, the paint is still ready to go uh, after all those years um the one thing i do like about this is there was, there's a there's a big thing about them not covering very well and, and i think if you look at some of the yellow some of the reds um from uh, it, the the range was a bit diverse in in the quality of the of the of the coverage 100 percent like I, I love the term as well. Diverse. Diverse in quality. Meaning what a deflection. Some, some of it yeah. was rubbish. Yeah, that, look, I'm <laughs> That's a, the most political are, response are, I've ever heard. Diverse in we quality. All know, there is diverse in quality. Yeah, we, 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 I we would all, say some of them were rubbish. We all know that um, that still to this day, there are paints within various different paint man, ranges of manufacturers that don't cover very well. But we never. there's never no such thing as a bad paint. It's just a paint that's not suitable for a job. So if you want a green that covers better, then you just find one from maybe from another range that, that's the same hue that will cover better for you for the, what you're trying to use it for. However, if you're wanting uh, if you're wanting for glazing, if you're wanting for doing like really thin wash layers, etc., like the old range is amazing. Um, now, the, the thing is with them as well is that I don't apply the blood red on my models by brush at all whatsoever because they are a bit more viscous and they are a bit more translucent in their coverage they are absolutely amazing for 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 airbrushing which is why in true blue peter fashion we have <laughs> some, a bottle of ketchup some, for the uh, some, audio some, listeners. Some, some, <laughs> it just looks like ketchup. so so the reason why that that blood red pot is empty is because the whole lot is in a ketchup bottle that's got pre-thinned to hang on a minute to, the story's changing now he said he used it all first you used it all yeah, I used it or put it in. Then here. it's perfect for airbrushing, but now it's pre thinned. Yeah, you have to put a bit thinner into it. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of steps here, Joe. Yeah. yeah so we're missing. So, you're, so you're, they, they cover amazingly. Pardon the pun, but you're glazing over a few details. Okay. They, they are great for airbrushing. And like with any paint, you dilute it down uh, to using an airbrush. They are they're absolutely amazing for airbrushing. They give a really smooth coverage over a model. I've used. Uh, like uh, Lich Purple, uh, we had used Lich Purple on obviously the Hawk Lords that we've done for the Leviathan launch. And the one thing that is really good about the old paint range is that they have such a high vibrancy of saturation. So that red is super, super, super bright. Same with all the other colors that are in that range. If you think of that, some of the older paints like Enchanted Blue, Leech Purple, Blood Red, uh, Blazing Orange, like some, they have got amazing, amazing saturation of color. Admittedly, they don't go on as well with a brush. That's perfectly fine. But it's just another tool to use in your arsenal. If you want a very, very vibrant, royal-looking red or saturated color, blood red for me is the absolute king of 
king of reds. It really is. It's absolutely amazing. Um, there's other manufacturers out there, obviously, um, but it's. I find it just good to use a bit of nostalgia from my from my, from my past and to in the modern day, which is which is why I use it. Um, yeah, and that's that's just blood red. It's just probably the least uh, replicatable for the listeners. Yeah. No, you can The thing is that, that there have been attempts to replicate it. You've got a range of paints called Nostalgia eighty eight, which is uh, which is out there. I've tried it. Um, a lot of the colours are like ninety five percent, so they are very close. Um, I think I got you the. I've, got you I've tried it. Yeah, you, you got like me the blood reds. Yeah, gift. Yeah, it's like here you go. You love blood red so much. Yeah, it, uh, it is, but I did genuinely want your opinion on it's, that as it's, well. Actually, they're, they're, they're very close. I, I like. They're very very close. I wouldn't say they're exactly the same, um, yeah. but but they are very very close. Um, having said that, upon about that range, just to touch upon it, I mentioned it when I spoke about nine five zero black, but chaos black from back in the day. That paint has not changed, in my opinion, the way it covers and the way it performs. Like the old chaos black. I use that analogy covers like tarmac, but it really does. It's phenomenal. Like a really, really good paint chaos black. And if you do want, if you do have it, it's just as good as using 950 in my opinion. Like it's good. And same with like Enchanted Blue covers extremely well, both with a brush and also with an airbrush. So you're going to have your, your, your better and worse is within a paint range. That old range is no, not no different. Um, but yeah, blood red in my opinion is the, the king of reds. So, so yeah. Provided that you thin it and put it in a ketchup bowl. Yeah, you can thin it in the air. No, I think that, I think bottle. the ketchup bottle probably doesn't change the the behaviour. I can't paint. believe after, ease. after, after I, ease, I think. after all the preaching I've been doing for dropper bottles, he goes out and gets that monstrosity. The, the dropper bottle. <laughs> I, I just turned it up to eleven. Yeah, big one. So it dwarfs him. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, but incidentally, if you are watching this, like again, think about time being the most important commodity. Like if you've got if your army is a red army or a blue army or whatever color your army is. Grabbing some ketchup bottles off of Amazon and actually just pre-preparing and pre-thinning the whole entire pot ready for use saves you so much time. And for consistency, it means that you can continue your army whenever you choose to pick up a new model to add to it. And it will be exactly the same because you've got the paint ready to go. Um, that, yeah. Especially I, handy if you're doing a mix as a base. Yeah. Color. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. That is the, uh, the downside of the drop bottle is you're probably not going to get thousands and thousands of points out of one bottle. So. Yeah. 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 Just a quick one, we wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We have a variety of painting levels to meet your needs and your budget, whether you want a centerpiece character or a full-blown gaming army. We offer well above the industry standard in terms of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of August, new clients can get 5% off of any commission using code AUGUST5. Joe, next one. Um... I'm gonna go for a pretty boring one, I think. I, I feel like I've, like I say, I've made a note of, of, you know, standing up for the unsung heroes and stuff like this on unsung this sung hero on this podcast with my magnifiers and, and so on. <laughs> so I wanted to shine a light on particularly boring paint. Potentially, I never really see many people talk boring, about boring. it that much. But Rhinox Hide, which I've also put in a rubbish dropper bottle that is right. um, I, know, I know i preached about the dropper bottles joe but that is an embarrassment they they <laughs> that, is, that they, is actually they were the first ones i bought and then they were the second ones i bought but neither are very good to be honest anyway rhinox hide um for me it, any lever or anything like that is the go-to mm -hmm. it's my go the go-to basically yeah. and then you work off of that mm -hmm. on top of that as well similar to the camo shade with the versatility angle um, Rhinox Hide as a um, recess shade and things like that, or mixing into colors for a recess shade. Yeah, yeah. I love mixing Rhinox Hide in with the base mix, for, like glazing down. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, that's why for me, like almost any, mo I, I would say actually every model I paint, there's room for something to do with Rhinox Hide in there, whether it's like just painting the lever like that, or even mixing it with something else to paint like wood or whatever. Like there's always, something and just the coverage in general on Rhinox Hide for me has always been great I don't know how, I don't really see people talk about it good or bad so I don't know what I would say that over is. over dark colors it covers pretty excellently yeah um, yes. and then uh, over light colors I'd say it has the same issue that any other dark color has over light colors. Yeah, not, yeah not particularly so bad. I just when I was thinking and, and the question was obviously like what you must have or what are your go-to's I don't think there's been a model that I've painted in the last like few years that hasn't had at least something to do with Rhinox Hide on it, whether it's a, a wash or a glaze or a base coat or or anything. It's, it's it's a really really good paint. I think 
all the things you've said, 100% weathering as well. But if you really want quick weathering on vehicles, a two-stage highlight color of the armor color and then sponge with Rhinox Hide gives you instantaneous tonal variance with sort of the battle damage or weathering that you do. Um, and, and it just, it, it looks amazing really, really quickly, really subtly, softly adding it on. Um, it, it is, even if you do a lighter, warmer leather, uh, as in maybe Mournfang or, um, oh, what's the other brown? I can't remember what it's called, but there's another brown in the GW range. It's really good. Um, but like Gawthor or something? Gawthor, no. It's Dried Bark? No. Oh, we're going to go through all the range now. <laughs> yeah, let's just list every yeah. single set of I can't. I can't think what one it is, but there's another. It's more already hued. Um, yeah, it's a more already hued one. It's the one that uh, our good friend MK bangs on about all the time. Um, Doomball, bro? Uh, Doomball, there we go. Yeah, we've got there in the end. There we go. Got to um, keep that all in now. Yeah. That's okay. all got to be in. You wanted longer episodes. This is what you're going to have to <laughs> yeah, up with. This yeah. is what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. The, the key to the longer episode was that we just didn't edit it. So we were yeah. like, yeah, you wanted... Uh, you Longer episode. episode. There you exactly. go. Here's the full hour that we took to record. Just wait until we take our lunch break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even using a lighter, warmer brown for light leather or for whatever it is that you're going to be doing, uh, Rhinox still plays a really good part in, in doing either the soft shade or the dark shade on the brown or toning it or when you do, when you glaze leather or et cetera. So, um, or even like the, the shadow of any scratch damage and stuff like that that's on there. Um, it's really, really good for doing that. So I think it's an, it, it nods back very closely to Scorch Brown from the old range, but I think it's, it's slightly darker if memory serves correct um but it's yeah a phenomenal paint and i i've i quite like you joe I've, I've used it in pretty much consistently as one of my browns that i go to every time whenever i do leather or battle damage or any of those things um every single time without fail it's just it's an amazing color um yeah big up rhinox hide big up rhinox hide right i've got magos purple that's my next pick it's a contrast i think it's one of the is that one of the original contrasts from First, first wave, wave, yeah. I'm unsure, but I'll, Should be first I'll wave, go with the majority. Regardless, don't use this one much, but on the theme of like something I couldn't really replace with some, I mean, I'm sure there's something else I could replace it with, but I've not found a replacement for or necessarily wanted to. It's quite a specific use case. Love glazing this in shadows mm -hmm. on pretty much any color, actually. Like, I think people generally go for like dark brown or, or black on a shadow, especially when, especially when you're glazing and I, I guess that makes sense. It works, but just for a, a bit of visual interest, it's quite nice. Catching to have a... strays from my uh, <laughs> why not hide inclusion for glazing into shadows here. That being said, I actually picked that up from uh, from doing my sons of Horus. I did a bit of a uh, bit of purple glazing in, in for the recesses of those. It's just a really subtle. If you thin it down and use it as a glaze, it's it's so subtle, but it's like really. I don't know. It goes a long way. I think like just for a little bit of visual interest. Really nice over white as well. Like just just glazing that in. Just for a shadow. I haven't found a replacement I haven't, for it. Um, I haven't used it, I don't think. I'm, I might have used a different contrast purple for like purity seals. Mm. Um, if you wanted a bit more of a... Well, in the wax part? On, on the, uh, Yeah, yeah, on the wax part. Yeah, yeah. When you want a bit more of a pinky purple, like scream of pink yeah. root mm. to, the, to the wax part of it rather than a pure red. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I've used either that contrast or a similar purple one. I can't remember what the other purple one is. Um, but yeah, that, that's the only thing I've really used it for. It's go. really um, quite like uh, the word I use, like it's quite soft. Like it's not a very heavy, and it's it's quite like desaturated as well. So it doesn't go over like super stainy, like harsh in yeah. terms of pigmentation. It's like I said, I, I like using that over white. Like if you really thin it down, like quite a lot of water, it's it's just a nice soft glaze. You can build it up over a few coats. Haven't found a replacement for it. Cool. I'll have to give it a go on something. Yeah. I've not tried. I've not tried many of the contrasts for for glazing. Being honest, I just don't. I don't really use them very much. I use a lot of inks. Um, but uh, I'll have to give it a go if it's that soft and that delicate to use it with. Do you, do you dye it down quite a lot? Then? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, contrast medium or, or no, just water, just water. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like the contrast uh, medium, but it makes it basically just makes it a less pigmented contrast paint. It doesn't right, really okay. change the behavior. Oh, okay. Because if you use water and you thin it down, it becomes more like a traditional glaze. Oh, okay. Oh, I think that kind of goes along with what they said when they launched contrast because they were encouraging people to use it. Obviously, the way that contrast was supposed to be used, so they were also saying, "Don't thin it down because it will change exactly. how it." Which behaves. I like to, yeah, like I don't like to use contrast in its traditional sense, mm. um, but I, I love them for glazing. Uh, I just, the, the trick for me is just to use just to use water instead of the contrast medium. Fair, okay. Go nice. on, I know you're itching, James. <sighs> It looks like I'm bringing. I'll tell you what. It looks like I'm bringing all the all the brightness to this to this uh, this this show. Um, uh, no spoilers for my third one, but yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> actually, no. Mine, actually, no. It's quite bright. So 
one of my favorite colors just in general, and this is more like a general use tool that I, I, you, I use it when I'm painting the inherent color, but uh, also for boosting other colors, um, is another model color. And it is uh, Vallejo model color ice yellow. A classic pick amongst the, uh, the painting scene. It, it is uh, the creme de la creme of brightening paints. It is the absolute best. Um, I, I use this for obviously painting yellow. So highlight stage on yellow. So if you're going to do like, uh, edges and things like that, it's quite good for that. Um, I've used a little bit of that in some occasions on red where I've wanted like dots, corner dots and things like that. Sometimes just putting a tiny little corner dot like that when using orange highlight stages can work quite nicely as well. Um, but where this bad boy really comes into, into power is by boosting other colors. Now, a lot of people put white obviously into paints, uh, which obviously it brightens to an extent, but it also pastelizes, I find, quite a lot um, because it inherently has uh, a, a yellowish hue and it's a bit more saturated. It actually, you you get the brightness, but it doesn't pastelize the colors. Very similar to ivory, but I still find in some situations, ivory will sometimes pastelize a color because it is closer to white than, than the ice yellow. It's amazing with purples, with reds, with greens, obviously with yellows, um, oranges it's great with. Like most colors you can put ice yellow into and it will add a lot of saturation and color shift really nicely like, along the spectrum of that branch of color. Um, I'm a big fan of obviously picking a brighter color within the same branch of color to boost the color, but the ice yellow is probably the one of the only colors from outside of the inherent branch of color that it is that I will use to then boost that color on many occasions. Um, I just find it gives you a bit uh, really good control over how you're highlighting the, the, the paint, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and because obviously it's a model color from Vallejo, it's, uh, it, it's, it's got loads of pigment in it. So you can add incremental tiny little amounts into whatever color you're trying to highlight or boost, and it'll make such a substantial change to it because of that concentration of pigment as well, which is just great. Um, I didn't say the, the number for anyone who wants it. It's 70.858. So it's, yeah, it's a really That big, is handy on the Vallejo yeah. paints, isn't it? The number. I do like that. When someone says to me, "This," if you go the other way, if you don't know the number, right? This is the difficulty with it. Yeah, I got caught out with this. I think it was I was trying to use um, it was like light grayish blue, which yeah. apparently is different to light bluish gray. Yeah, right. That's so, why you need the yeah, number. Yeah, yeah that's but that's, that's because Vallejo have got so many grays. That's because, what I'm because, saying. That's why yeah. the numbers so. Oh good. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, they, because they come. But from, if you don't know the number, <laughs> so it just that's says, what I mean. Yeah, yeah well, it, you better it, know the number. It helps hugely. Yeah, definitely know the number, but. But um, but yeah, like there's lots of different. I mean, I've, I know the, the paint's like, good as well. By the way, I didn't mean that wasn't my only takeaway <laughs> from the thing. I, I do mean, like ice yellow as ca, well. Ca, um, AK make an ice yellow as well, so they've got. A, but I've not tried the AK they, one. They they are they are different. Um, they're not exactly the same. So just be conscious of that. I think the AK one's a little bit stronger in its in how bright it is, as in as in the, the color, um, a bit of the saturation of it. So so I. I I've not tried the AK one all cards on table. I've seen it in a bot in a pot, um, but I prefer looking at them in pot. I prefer the ice yellow. Um, yeah, I just think it's a better one personally. Cool. So, so yeah, it's um, my last one. Is it me? That it's you. Um, mine's sort of touching on a point that you brought up earlier, George, because mine is uh, Vallejo Model Metallic Air Gunmetal. Oh, this goes back to the Vallejo thing with the names. Model uh, well, it's seven air. seven one dot zero seven two. If you're wondering, does that clear it up for you? <laughs> oh, well, why didn't you say so? You'll get used to the numbers, but George. <laughs> but I'm not talking about airbrushing it. I'm talking about with a brush. With a brush, mm. little trick. It's not a hidden gem of a trick. Everyone knows about it, but I do just really like it. It's it's a nice color in general. It is a darker metallic color, so a darker silver base coat, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Goes on so smooth, like literally not even on the wet palette and don't even really need to fill it down like um it just goes on one coat most that's the, of the difficulty time. with using air paints for brush painting is on the upside they're pretty thin but on the downside they're pretty thinned if you get what i mean i get what you mean but i think with this one specifically um i mean you don't sound like you need to try it because you've got your holy trinity on lock but uh <laughs> <laughs> but for me it was like just a trick that I saw someone mention. I don't know if it was someone on the team or if it was just something I saw online and I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. And um, it's, yeah, it's one of my go-tos for, for base coating silver now. It's just so easy. Um, goes on so easy. It's easy to highlight because it's a little bit darker than... Um, this is a rival pick. I feel like you were specifically targeting... Yeah, 
Um, I'm, on purpose, I'm putting all the others in front of your <laughs> ones on the on the shrine. Um, yeah, I think I, I've actually got I've got your one as well, and I just haven't haven't revisited it that much, if I'm honest. But um, maybe I need to. They are quite similar as well, actually. Look at that. Metal they is are a, very gun, similar. Gun, gun metal is a little bit darker, I think. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, I, I I think one of the things that with airbrush metallics is that they do go on very well with a brush, as in the coverage. Like, I, I, whereas sometimes with an airbrush paint, like more uh, more of a normal color, acrylic color, they don't cover as well sometimes with the. With it's the, also the like because it's designed for the airbrush the flecks are like non-existent so you do actually get a bit of a different look mm. um i would yeah. say that the one downside or upside whatever you you know depends what side of the fence you're sitting on um is that the flecks aren't very visible yeah so yeah. if you prefer to have a smoother look to your metallics then that's going to help if you like the, the flecks they're not really going to be there to be honest and especially once you wash it and varnish it and stuff like that it can look a little bit flat if you don't if you don't varnish it properly yeah um but i do like the finished look of it really so yeah um, i think it helps with the scale if you've got such tiny flecks on it as well you haven't got like these huge flecks on the on the, on the models that are only 28 mil as well yeah right? that smaller yeah. fleck it just looks more i don't say natural but it looks a bit more a bit more in keeping with the size of the model as well yeah um, i think you could potentially argue yeah because of the the varnish and stuff like that it does end up requiring a little bit more work because you have to do some highlighting and changing yeah, stuff yeah. yourself a little bit more than a, a yeah. flecky metallic paint would yeah. would allow you to to leave off so yeah um yeah but i like it and george's one sucks next <laughs> <laughs> come on george last up that no, doesn't really i actually like the scale ones as well the scale ones are phenomenal they are good yeah right my last one then i'm putting up for the everyman sarah from sepia what a paint yeah fair fair I, I to be fair i haven't used it that much recently but it's a it's a legend. It's yeah, it's right up there. Like I said, in terms of paints you can't replace, that's probably GW washes. I don't know what it is about them. It's just something. They've always been phenomenal. Right yeah. back to the days of Ban of um, uh, Griffin Sepia um, and all the old old ones with through. Like they're they're they the washes. GW washes have always been um, really good. Like before, even before the, in, the infamous another old like Bad Ad Black um, wash was amazing as well. So they've just always been phenomenal producing them. I tell you what, I would have loved to have been around when washes or like shade paints were released for the first time. Do you remember like the first time you used a wash and like how I, mind blowing I remember, it was? Well, one I almost brought in uh, similar along the lines of that was the Army Paint uh, Strong Toe mm. because that's that was a paint that was like I was told about as soon as I started painting and. Um, I believe the the friend that that told me about it basically said um, it doesn't it literally doesn't matter what you've done slap that on it and you'll <laughs> it, it will look it will look a lot better which when I was first learning how to paint yeah hundred percent it did as a beginner that, for sure I slapped yeah. that on it and I was like I'm actually incredible <laughs> um, I remember I remember having a similar moment I remember when I was like a kid doing Warhammer for like the first time I was like just base coating everything like just painting everything like blocking in. And then I remember my uncle, who was, like, who was a model maker at the time, he showed me like washes and he was like, I'll try this. And he like, bought me one of the Citadel washes and I put it over the model. I was like, oh my God. I know, yeah. right? Like, so yeah, I would have loved to have been around and painting and like, you know, maybe a few years into painting when they brought them out for the first time to experience those for the first time. That must have been absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> they, 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 have, they have been around for a long, long, long time. Like it, what it, like, like this range of paints obviously you've got before the range that they've got currently and just talking about names and stuff like that you had obviously the previous previous paint range to the one we've got currently with games workshop but even before that even back in the og like second ed days you, you did have washes within within those as well so you had like orc wash or orc flesh wash you had flesh wash which was an infamous one as well so they were around but I, what i think it was is that you you the the system as in the base coat wash like how like that that wasn't as much in place in those days um but yeah like sepia i use it for everything i use it for skin scrolls like materials like everything's phenomenal, phenomenal. good on a bit of parchment that i think yeah, when i was first starting great. i was the uh yeah. use agrax for everything kind of like your uh yeah, i was doing strong tone yeah but, uh transitioning out of that and uh using the sepia yeah, they, yeah they, it's, it's, it's great really really recommended i'm sure everyone watching this has either used it at some point so it's yeah it's brilliant Good little set of paints, really. I don't know what you'd paint with it if you went and got all. Of I, I'm actually the thing. The thing that's funniest about this is at the end of that, if you had just that to paint a model, you would 
You'd have a pretty bad time. Yeah. I'm sure you'd come up with actually something all right. Actually. You'd have to paint a a sort of off looking blood angel. I think <laughs> I think it's all you'd get out of it. There's a lot of like <laughs> washes and metallics going on there. So basically and what what base paints we've got? We've got ice yellow, we've got black, and we've got the red. That's about all you could use. And the rhinox side. So you're either painting a I'd have to do some black templars, maybe. Yeah. Just yeah. ice yellow into the yeah, black for your highlights. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You'd be surprised what you can do with it. There'd be quite a lot you can do. Red um, eyes. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Good. Um Good. yeah, so maybe you do need a few more then <laughs> than, than that. It turns out, uh yeah, even it didn't end up being the perfect shopping list I was hoping it ended up being, <laughs> if I was honest. Right, I've got a game for us. Game show time. We done underrated, overrated. I'm back again. We're doing round two. We should probably keep a tally for like maybe who's winning these. They're not really like a point system. It's not really a winnable thing, but maybe over, like who who, the, who had the best answer. The, or the best answers are the or who the audience agreed with a lot of the time. Yeah, stuff like that. we might have to keep this running. Right, I've got a new one. This is the classic. Would you rather? Warhammer painting edition, of course. So I've come up with a few would you rather questions that you can ponder and we can discuss. I've got a few here for you. Right, are you ready? As ever, always. Number one, this is for the both of you. Would you rather only be able to use a size triple zero brush for one year or only be able to use a size 10 brush for one year? I, I'm, I'm going to use the triple zero. And I'm just going to dedicate myself to only painting epic scale models. <laughs> <laughs> and then within a year, I'm going to be the best epic scale painter you've ever seen in your life. I can't believe you've cracked, you've like cracked the case for this. Yeah. That's a massive loophole that I was not anticipating. Yeah. And then I'll be like, yeah, I'll be winning it's GDs really and everything. Oh. Epic scale. Yeah. Well. So I'm going to answer this understanding that it's the only thing you can paint with. And that's the way that I'm looking at. Mm. So, I'm going to. He's going to do the opposite. He's going to start gonna, tightening arm. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with a size ten, um, because it should have a really good tip on it, which means you can still do detailed stuff. But I am not sitting there blocking in models with a triple zero. I'm sorry, it just is not happening. Like, um, and I don't want to paint a tight army. So yeah, size size ten all day long, all day long. What are you going to paint with that? Everything. Every, every, <laughs> every, <laughs> every, every, all of it. <laughs> All of it. Cool. I'll paint up. Yeah, I'll paint. every every model. Yeah, every all model. Everything. All of the models. I'll paint all the models. I yeah. mean, that's a challenge waiting to happen, isn't it? I still think you could paint epic with a size ten. We should do a video, right? I'll do a model with a triple zero only, and you do a model with a size that, ten. That only. should be a face off. We should have like an equivalent. Uh, we should get an epic rhino and a normal size rhino. Yeah, what I'll if do, he's got the I'll triple do. zero? Wait, while you're <laughs> while you're spending three hours blocking it in with the with the uh, no no, zero. I'll do an epic rhino with my triple zero. Oh, you that, do a normal rhino with your size ten. That'd be the twist. We could do it the other way around. You got to paint an epic rhino <laughs> with a size ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I reckon I reckon that'd be fun. Um, no, I'd go size ten all day long. Okay, right. Next up, this is uh, going along with the theme of things you got to live without. Oh god. Would you rather no wet palette or no painting lamp? Um, so the little light on my magnifiers, <laughs> <laughs> does that, oh, that the magnifiers as... will come in handy with a size triple zero epic thing. That's as well. true. No, it's true. Um, true. Does that count as a painting lamp? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> there we go. I'll have my wet palette and I'll have my, my light on my No, 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 like just room. Well, I guess you could oh, so adapt. it does count as a painting lamp. All right. No, no, I'll no. get rid of the, I'll get rid of the, uh, wet palette then. I need a lamp. I need a lamp. We're opposite ends of the spectrum again. Wet palette. I, I've got uh, daylight bulbs in my room, so uh, James going to be painting outside in the sun. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I've got spotlights in my painting room, so and they're, they're white as anything. So I, I will take the I will take the the, the wet palette. There is there lamp. is zero chance that downlighting from the ceiling is going to be as good. It's going to be. It's not going to be as good, but it's I, not going to be. It's not only not going to be as good. Dry as palette as good as a wet palette. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going I'm going wet palette all day long. I feel like that's going to be atrocious though, because the, the shadows have got to be probably quite extreme, right? No, I think do you know what I think your eyes get used to used to how much paint you put in a certain area and how you have, uh, do stuff. I think obviously the lighting does obviously help you to see in depth what you're doing, but I, I I think muscle memory and also like the memory of how you paint stuff doesn't really you don't lose your approach to painting because of the light. So I I would to be <laughs> fair, if you look at the paints that I'm using, I kind of need a bit of dark to see them. If you're using this, yeah. I think you'll be all right. Yeah. I love that he said that philosophically as if he's going to paint like a blind man. Like yeah. you, yeah. you don't even need the light. You can just feel the color. Yeah. 
He's got the false. He's like uh, Donnie Yen in the Rose Light. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no, wet palette. I, that is coming I'm with, with the paint, the painters with me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. amen. Yeah, no, I, I would go wet palette all day long. Yeah, right. This is going to be uh, this. This is targeted at you too specifically. This might not translate as well for the listeners. But okay. Would you rather never paint another Space Marine again? Yep. Or paint an entire Stormcast army in non-metallic metal? <sighs> I uh, I think I'd be quite happy to never paint the space marine again. I do <laughs> like them, but there's so much other stuff. I can see the wheels turning in James's yeah, head. James <laughs> is much more diehard space marine fanboy than yeah, me. Yeah, I'm like. gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say uh, I go for the go for the stormcast. I, I I love marines, so yeah. Do you dislike stormcast? No, but they're just they're just fantasy marines. You know? I actually I actually don't mind stormcast, but I I couldn't I couldn't. <laughs> Do a full army of NMM Stormcast. So, so I don't think I could do a full NMM no, I, army of any. I, I don't think I could do. But if you told me I had to just do NMM on the blades of the Stormcast army, I think I'd still, I'd no, still I, say no. I, let alone the full. Or I would, but then the color scheme that I come up with for the Stormcast would hardly have any metal on it. I there's my workaround. I'm dedicated to uh, working around your. Your little games that you have here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a, a, a way out. There's of a pothole in all of these questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going, I'm going Stormcast. Like irrelevant if it's full NMM or like number one. It's something that for me is something that I've, I've not properly approached or had the, had the sort of confidence to fully do. So it gives me to live by the, what I preach, which is push myself outside my comfort zone. I would dive headfirst into doing it, even though yeah. if they don't look very good, it means I can still paint Marines. I'm just saying bye to. Space no, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I, I, I can't. Would you rather paint a Warlord Titan, full size one, full drop one, but Joe, every single piece, every single piece is in a sub assembly, or paint an Imperial Knight army, but with no spray cans and no airbrush? <laughs> um. So the t- the Titan, every single individual piece. Not it's not actual sub assemblies. It's every piece. You got to paint each piece one by one before gluing anything together. I I mean I'd rather I don't know pay one of you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose if I had to pick one, I would succumb to the sub assembly because at least I have a Titan at the end of that one. I would hate, just to clarify, I would hate either one of those. But uh, yeah, I suppose I, I'll pick I'll pick the Titan sub-assembly thing. I will say, a Knight Army, and... Knight Army, it's not that many models. Yeah, but, but the entire thing, by, uh, so I've got to prime it by brush as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah see, it's not going to happen, is it? I'm going to end up with a, <laughs> with a rubbish Knight Army or I'll end up with a decent Titan. But if, so... you, use, if you use your size 10 brush with a bit of that primer. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember, I'm still using a triple zero at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm taking the Titan. He's been brewing. Look I'm at him. Put put the work in. I put a lot of thought into this. Foot. I'm going night army all day long, all day long. So you prime him with a brush, sponge paint, prime him with sponge. You said prime him with a sponge. Mm-hmm. Get your paint on the palette, sponge, 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 sponge. You could just dry brush the army, as and well. then you dry brush it all yeah. day long. No, he's got a good one there. All day long. And then you can still paint all the details normally. I didn't realise there were so many plot holes in all these questions. Yeah. <laughs> I love that in the spirit of the question, you're not like, hmm, which one would I rather do it? So how can while I wriggle Joe, out of while, this situation? Yeah. <laughs> while while Joe, Joe was like struggling to stop spontaneously combusting at the thought of sub-assemblies, I was, I was like, I'm going to sponge the crap out of it. Don't worry, Joe, though. You could, you could use your magnifier still. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going, I'm going night army. Right. In a less uh, negative thing you've got to live without, this is on the upswing now. Which would you rather get? An unlimited supply of retro paints or an whatever, unlimited... Whatever the next one is. <laughs> or an unlimited supply of retro models. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely that one. Retro models. 100% for me, retro models. Can I... Can I, I just want to say, he has an unlimited supply of retro <laughs> yeah. paints. Can I, can, I, can I ask a question? It doesn't mean we're going to take that away. No, no, no. Can I ask a question, though, however? Are the models sealed or unsealed? They're sealed, brand new. Oh, the new models all day. You can't sell them though. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's models, isn't it? Models. I've got the paint. 
I want the models. It's only because he's got the paint. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's assume you had no paint. Oh, right? okay. If you had to trade in your paint. Yeah, all of your paints have, have, have burned in a fire. You've got paint. no paint. I was going the paints. Yeah, I'm going paint. Fair. Yeah. Well, there we go. So you can paint my models for me. I wouldn't. Right. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't let you. Open we joined up on that one. You could. You could team up. Actually, if one of you, if you, if you went in this yeah, together, yeah. one of you said, "Right, you take the paint. I'll take the model. I'll we'll just do I would, some swaps." I, would, I, you wouldn't, I wouldn't let him open the seal boxes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Would you rather be given the strength of an Astartes or be given the skill of Darren Latham? <laughs> Which superpower would you like? I feel like. Uh, for me, the strength of the starters is more attainable, naturally. Than, <laughs> than the, uh, the, to me, the Darren Latham skill level seems so out of reach that I would have to cheat and take that one, I think. I'm going to ask a question. When you say strength of the Astartes, does that mean you get the longevity of an Astartes? No, it says the strength. It's in the question. Just the strength. You don't get the life expectancy then. You're still no. walking around as James Otero, the human being. You're just going to be can... James Otero, the human being, who is still five foot eight, but you also happen to be able to deadlift yeah. like a you building. You can just do like jam jars a lot easier and stuff. Or harder. You might actually crack the jam jar. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with skill. Because taking, I was hoping taking you, skill. I, I was hoping you were going to say you get the life expectancy because I'll take that and then I'll just spend every single second of that. I still don't think you reach it. I don't think yeah, you maybe not. Yeah, yeah, your life yeah. expectancy. You can give me a little time. You, I'm you, not you, could, you could try at least. I don't yeah, think this yeah. is a time issue. No, yeah, no. I, yeah, I'm, I'm say, not sitting there going. If I have more time, <laughs> if only I had more time of the day, I could be just like that. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. If you've I'll got like a thousand years, it's a long time to practice. No chance, mate. It's not happening. It's not happening. Not for me. Yeah. It's got. Maybe for you, not for me. It's got, yeah, if you don't get the life expenses, then I'm just going to say get the skill straight away. Yeah. That really proves what nerds we are, that we would all like, nah, don't we you know that strength, than... don't you be <laughs> buff. <laughs> yeah, skill. Definitely. Completely thrown out the window, like all the practical life advantages of being like the strongest person yeah. on the planet. Like, don't worry, don't need that. Yeah. All right, brilliant. You could argue better strength does inherently give you better life expectancy but that's a different conversation no that's why i asked the question because i was like if, yeah. if you get the life expectancy, not the life expectancy of the start is but it would give you better yeah, life no expectancy. i go for the skill right. you might get a few more years to to paint yeah skill skill <laughs> We wanted to let you know that tickets are now on sale for our C Studios painting courses, which we'll be running all across the UK in the coming months. For over eight years, C Studios have been running in-depth, hands-on classes all across the UK, which has allowed us to create the perfect learning environment for improving your painting proficiency. With a mixture of topics available, all our classes are taught by senior artists and they feature practical demonstrations in a relaxed environment that welcomes interaction from you. We have discussions on theory, an open Q&A session at the end of every course, and you can ask that burning question that you've had on your mind for weeks. You can even bring your models along for feedback. For more information and to book a ticket now, head to cstudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Right, question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. Please leave a comment below or reply to our Instagram story if you'd like to leave a question for next week's episode. We have this week, what sizes of brushes do we like to use? Quite a general one, that. Yeah. Yeah. I've come with the. I've come with props for this question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we weren't told about the props. Yeah, I just want to go. I was not told I needed to bring right. brushes I, to to redeem the fact of I could. I was supposed to only live about three paints, and I actually yeah. had five. I couldn't narrow it down. I could definitely only live with two sizes of brushes, and I know that for a fact because I literally do that now. Yeah. Right. A two and a zero. Done. I want unlimited size twos, unlimited size zeros. <laughs> yeah. Those two in, com in conjunction, size two, big enough belly that it holds paint, doesn't dry out, but still small enough that I can use it for edge highlighting, use it for fine stuff. detail work. Yeah. And then the zero just for the things that the uh, that the two can't get at in a tight gap or something like that. Paint some eyes on a face. I think I'm I'm similar with a size two. I'll I'll try and use just through pure laziness the same brush for for as much as possible. Um I think probably base coating I'll go a bit larger, but then yeah, majority of the model I'm trying to do, I'm trying to use probably a size two. I think if I could, the thing I struggle with is I, I would want a size three or maybe even a four, but what I tend to find is they don't get like fatter, they mm -hmm. get a bit longer. longer at those sizes. It's not until you get to five, six, they get fatter, maybe four in some brands, but um, in my head, a size three, 
that was fatter than the size two would be perfect. But yeah, mostly a size two. I like that sentiment, I think, actually. Yeah. yeah. Size four, triple zero. Size four and a triple, that's the extreme end of those spectrums. Yeah. yeah. Size four, triple zero, all day long and twice on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I really, obviously, to preface for a lot of listeners and stuff as well, I'm definitely not doing as much fine detail work as you two. But I don't think I've really ever touched a triple zero. I haven't found they dry too quick for me. A use personally for a triple zero. It's literally zero. like um even though I'm using a wet palette, so I've got my triple zero. And then in the time it takes from moving my hand from the palette to the model, the, the brush is already dry. Yeah, I feel like you have all, to put all, so all much paint on it, but all you got for it to stay like n not dry yeah. that uh by the time you put that much paint on it, you and then you, use it and then you get brush. that tiny little like dried like bead on the end <laughs> on the tip. Yeah. So I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I think if you if you just incrementally knock the dilution down a little bit, so it doesn't dry as quick on the on the brush for a smaller brush. Obviously, it's a small brush head. So if you just step the dilution down slightly, as in just really refinely dilute it down, it will stay. It will still stay wet while workable. Um, but yeah, size four. Size four, you're quite right. Some brands have a big, bit more. Bit more. Uh, it's thickness. inherent to the brand, right? Because like a size yeah. zero from like Rosemary is oh, different to a size zero from Windsor. Yeah, right? yeah, they're all different. Like they're all different in that they vary in length and in, yeah. in, in thickness of uh, or filled pack of, of, of hair in the head. So yeah, they do vary. But um, yeah, for me, the size four, size, size four and size triple zero all day long. Like they, they just, it just covers each end of the spectrum. And the four can, with pressure management, you can control it down to, to less work. New, uh, newish segment on the on the topic of question of the week. We're going to go through uh, some of the viewers' comments from last week's episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a bit, uh, got some spicy responses. So yeah, uh, we got a, a few people <laughs> didn't, didn't quite like the clip that we put out on Instagram. A fair, no, a few people did, to be fair, but a few people didn't. Uh, what were your What were your thoughts on the uh, on the conversation? If you didn't If you didn't listen to last week's uh, episode, please don't go do go and listen to that. That was with uh, Stephen Box from Vanguard Tactics. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a bit about the uh, the competitive play and the painting sort of thing. Um, let's let's address some of these. Um, Crisis Pro to Paint says, "Yeah, nah, we don't need this kind of weird grind the fun out of everything mindset." I I think with it so on a, on a personal level, I think you you would both understand that in general. I kind of agree with that sentiment. Um, and we talk about it all the time, and how much I absolutely detest the thing that I think this commenter thinks that Boxy's doing in that comment, which is the the grind set influencer businessy thing. But I don't think so. So I agree with that sentiment, but I don't actually think, in context of that episode and knowing who Stephen is and knowing what Stephen brings to the community, yeah, I don't think that's actually what he's doing. So I get I get the 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 sentiment and maybe maybe out of context, not knowing who he is or or not knowing what the conversation was in a broader sense, which is natural for for a clip that we post on Instagram. Um, I can see why people might have got that end of it, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think that's invalid either because like like you said, I'm sure where you're going. This is we we don't want to do that either, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's a difficult thing because like obviously we're being professional painters and there are obviously professional gamers and there's a whole spectrum that there is within this hobby. You've got the people that just do it in the evening when they get home from work that, for some fun. That's exactly and then we, it. obviously, it being our jobs, we take it to the extreme end of that. I mean, we love entering competitions. and. But again, I think even, even when you're saying we there, like I think uh, anyone that thinks that we're pushing grind the fun out of everything, I would highly recommend probably the first two episodes of this podcast where we were really kind of laying down our thoughts on a few things as yeah, an introduction yeah. to people. And I, I feel like, I, I actually remember finishing the second episode and I thought that I didn't stop banging on about only doing things for fun. Yeah. And like, so even within this rotation of people on this podcast, obviously Stephen was a guest, he's not part of the podcast. And I don't want to start talking for him. I'm sure he'll be back, but we, we all love him. Have him back in some time. Um, so, but, but for me, like the fun is the most important thing. And I've gone over that multiple times. Obviously, again, it's a clip, it's a guest. Um, so I get the sentiment of that and I actually agree with it. But I think all we need to do is remember that everyone's goals are different. And well, some it's people, like in the context of that conversation, we were talking about succeeding and being the very best and being having the mindset and focus and stuff like that. So those kind of 
conversations lead to to clips like that. I guess. I think, I think all I would say is like I I completely understand where that where they're coming from, but but at the same time, like within within this industry and within the hobby, you do have completely different approaches to to doing it. That's the beauty of the hobby that we've got. Like you can take you can do it purely for fun. You can do things, but if you do want to push it to an extreme or do something that uh, you know at the leading curve then then you can and i think that that there's nothing inherently wrong with either approach to it at all whatsoever but the way that steve approaches stuff is, is because of his background and because of the way the things he's always done he's always been in that mindset um which again i think the context of the episode in full does help that got another one here which is a really positive one thank you very much it's a uh, really enjoyed this episode Hope to see Stephen back as a frequent guest. Uh, such great chemistry chemistry amongst the group. Thank you for that. Uh, this makes me think back to when Stephen ran the Daily Gauntlet during the pandemic to help uh, us all get a moment of joy in the day with a great discussion around the hobby. Uh, it says this format is a real differenti differentiator for Siege. I mean, thank you very much. What was the yeah. name of the... the... It's uh, Car X or Born. I mean, that's okay, quite good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. give you that. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, that... Touching on that last bit there, uh, this being like differentiate for us. Obviously, we did the main the main aim of this podcast is to be. There's a lot of uh, miniature painting podcasts and uh, hobby podcasts. We do want to keep ourselves slightly different to uh, to everyone yeah. else. So obviously, if you do have any suggestions for segments or topics that you want to see, then uh, we really do appreciate your feedback. Don't want to leave a comment as well. You can always drop a, a DM to to the accounts on Instagram or on social media. Yeah. yeah, I think it was nice as well to get some that kind of exactly touches on the point that I was just talking about about if you know Steve and you know how he is within the community is probably not the what some of those other comments were suggesting um yeah. it's so. like that it's like that iceberg thing like I, i'll say like you see the tip of it you see the top of it you don't see all this stuff underneath and beneath beneath the competitive and beneath the sort of like the hard work drive you know there i've known steve for many years and like he has got a side where he does like to chill out he does like to have a, have a laugh you know like we've spoken about playing lord of the rings like you know just yeah, yeah that, that, for a laugh and stuff so it is there definitely but um but regards to sort of like the podcast and stuff yeah like we, we are trying to do something a bit different um than what we normally do and, and just really sort of give back as much as we physically can i think giving back value is something that we're all really keen on and um if you get something from this then let us know in the comments yeah i'd be curious to know from you all as well uh, for the listeners what you're doing while you listen to the podcast. Yeah, is, this yeah, like a, is this a background hobby thing for you? Are you, uh, you driving to work listening to this? Let yeah. us know. Yeah, it's fine. I've seen people reference um, uh, a, whether a, I saw a discussion on someone about whether a podcast is a monitor one podcast or a monitor two podcast. <laughs> I like that, yeah. And I'd like to know whether we're a monitor one, as in you have to watch it and sit down and enjoy it. Maybe you're having a snack or we're a monitor two which means we're off to the side while you're painting or something like Playing that. Playing Boulder's Gate or something. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we've got one last one here, which is uh, Coma8203 says, still wish the episodes were longer. Well, they are now. Yeah, they I, are now. I hope you made it far <laughs> enough into this to see your comment. Yeah. Um, and like we said earlier, we had a few comments about this and we just thought, you know what? Um, initially, we were keeping them short for just the fact that we didn't know whether people would want them longer or not. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the more we got into it, the more comments we got like that. We thought, you know what? Also, we enjoy doing it. So, of course. Yeah. Of course. New uh, closing tradition, hopefully. Hobby hacks. Right. This is going to be our last little roundup before the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Quick little uh, quick little tip you might want to share with, uh, with the listeners. I'll, I'll go with my first one. Joe, I thought of this one just for you. This is a tip if you're doing your... That's good because I haven't got one. <laughs> 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 one. Tip for you, Joe, if you're doing your sub-assemblies because I know you're a big fan. Yeah. Well, when I'm painting my Titan. <laughs> when you're painting your Titan, bear this one in mind. Uh, super glue. Use it for its weakness, which is the fact of it's not that strong. Might be called super glue. Unfortunately, on plastic models, it's not very super. This is where sub assemblies possibly get a bad rap, right? Because like when you finish painting the thing, you put it back together, it doesn't necessarily fit perfectly, whatever. What I like to do is if there's when I'm building a model and I know there's a part I'm gonna want to paint separately. I'll put it together with the tiniest, tiniest dot of super glue. And that way, I, when I can build the model fully and I can prime it as normal. And then when I'm in the painting process down the line, even when I'm like halfway through, it's not like before I paint, I'll just snap that piece off. And then I can put that on a separate little sub assembly. Now it's out of the way, I can do what I need to do. And then I can plastic glue it back on okay. after the fact. Okay. I might give it a go. Yeah. Maybe I'll give it a go and report back. There you go. Why not um, next week? How Joe got on with his uh, Titan? Next week? I'm not doing that quick. <laughs> what, um, what? You're not building your Titan in a week? <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, no, wait, wait, wasn't I? I wasn't allowed. Oh, no, I was allowed to use sprays with the Titan. That was the thing of it being. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah you can use sprays. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have got any, uh, any hobby hacks? Yeah, I do. I'm going to add a brother to your one, which is um, if you do use weak super glue, then you need to get Mitre Bond in your life. Uh, it's a building trade glue uh, that comes with an activator. So you can either have it weak by using a spot weld with the activator, the, the spray can activator, or if you leave it to air dry, the, the Mitre Bond, uh, it, it literally glues like cement and it will glue anything together. Super, super strong. It literally glues bricks together in the building trade. So um, I would recommend picking up some Mitre There's no way that it literally, there's no way that there are tradesmen there with their <laughs> just spray glue. kind of activator with their <laughs> bricks. They're like, don't need them all. Well, no, the activator <laughs> makes it weaker. Yeah. You, but then the 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 actual strength of the mite bond, I don't have an issue with. The thing with me is that the the bottle and everything for for miniatures, I just oh, you know what, John? Throwing in another hobby hack, right? They sell little disposable like needle applicators. You love a a, a third party bottle, yeah? Don't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Maybe does. that's my thing. Yeah, but I always. I always saw those on like Amazon and stuff, and I just assumed that like, oh, they probably won't be the right size, or whatever. Apparently, super glue is just like a default industry Universal. standard size. Yeah. So you buy those little uh, those little needle applicators. They're they're brilliant. I don't they're think brilliant. it'll be Mitre Bond. Mitre Bond, Bond's no, but, big old. Mite, bond. It won't work for Mitre Bond. I'm saying for the for the yeah. super glue. Yeah. That is why I don't like the Mitre Bond. It's the uh, it's not yeah, very precise. No, it's yeah. not as precise, but it 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 is mega for glue. Like it's the best super glue on the market. Like yeah, it comes from building trade. So if it can do what it does in building trade, it's fine on. Plastic and metal. Resonance. I like the uh, while we're all while we're all doing uh, super glue recommendations. I can't remember the exact uh, the exact thing, but there's a a Loctite one, which has like a plastic sort of apparatus with it that lets you be a bit more precise. And that one in particular, just like the consistency of the glue and the strength. The strength is quite good, but the consistency of it uh, and the way it applies is like perfect for miniatures. Yeah. Um, I'll maybe drop a comment with the exact thing because I completely can't remember this at all. I'll yeah. put it in the description. We'll put, put some links in for different ones or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, cool. um, but no. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you everyone for listening to our uh, our new rebuild of, uh, of Paint Perspective. Thank you very much for listening and we will see you next week. 